morning everyone welcome to the course the treasures of rome how to avoid art and history overwhelm and fall in love with the eternal city with me former consul to papua new guinea maria cristina saraceno my mission is to bring art and history to everyone who craves them wherever they are in the world wherever you may be I believe that art and history enrich your life and should not be overwhelming or out of reach. So I will bring them to you and I will make sure you love them. I believe I can help you access art and history so that you can be happier and have a richer life. So this course is for cultural explorer. Are you one of us? I'm sure you are. Welcome to the Treasures of Rome. The aim of this course is to transform the way you look at Rome so that you can get the greatest benefits from your trip or from your virtual exploration if you're not actually going there soon. The secondary aim to this course is to show you a vast choice of cultural experiences so that you might find those that are most suited to you because most people go to Rome and do the usual circuit and that is very limited. So the myth is that most people believe that just by walking around Rome with a guidebook and having researched on Google what to see, they are going to understand Rome and be happy on their travels. What actually happens is that very often they are frustrated, they end up tired, overwhelmed with the complexity of Roman art and history, and after the nth church or palace or museum, they switch off. So this is what I'd like you to avoid to do, and this is why I'm going to help you. A lot of people also spend too much time and money in experiences which do not interest them at all, just because they are on the list of the top sites. You've got to find the things that actually you like and you would like to do. So this is what I'm going to help you with as well. So the solution, well, I've worked at determining the complexity of Rome for over 20 years, I can now show you a proprietary system you can use to access Roman art, history, and lifestyle without overwhelm. See Rome through the eyes of a Roman and a Roman that has studied Roman art and history for a long, long time. It's easy, it's simple, and it's lots of fun. I have promoted Rome as a consul for a long time, and now I'm just going to show you the fun side of it. We are not going to follow a chronological or a geographical order. We're going to group experiences by theme and it's going to be a roller coaster through time and space. So sit, up, sit tight and enjoy the show. So what's going to be our method? Well, first we're going to learn how to see. I know how to see, you'll tell me. No, you don't. You don't know what to look out for when you are in Rome. And unless I show you first, you're going to miss out. Then we're going to learn how to time travel. So we'll work with your empathy and with your imagination. And we'll time travel to two different squares in Rome. So that then you can learn a method and you can reply, uh, replicate it everywhere you like around Rome. Then we're going to learn to use, reuse and recycle Roman style, which is a lot of fun. And we're going to learn to see ancient Rome in the living city, everywhere you walk around Rome. We're going to learn to expect the unexpected. And we're going to work your sense of wonder. And then we're going to learn to follow the stories because your brain loves them. And so whenever you're in Rome, look out for stories. So today we're going to start with learn to see. So we're going to have a look at where to look and what to look out for. Because in Rome, if you just look around at eye level, as you normally do, you miss out on so much. So, let's have a look. What should we look at? We need to look down, under everything, to see what is under street level, so that you can access the history, because everything from a long time ago is underground. Then you need to look from above to see what you can discover that you could not otherwise grasp, so it, as if you were a satellite. And then you no, need to look up 
for telltale signs of power or Madonnas or Motto or Dates and a lot more so that you can understand Roman life throughout the centuries. So the plan is first I will show you the method and tell you stories and then we're going to apply the method together to a piazza you are familiar with or you will be familiar with soon as soon as you get to Rome. Piazza Navona. Okay, so step one is look down under your feet. What is underground? Always ask yourself that. Because unless you look if there is anything underneath, you miss out. There's lots underneath underground, so find out. Look for layers. So in 2017, Rome will be 2,770 years old. That's pretty old. So a lot of refurbishing has been going on throughout the centuries. Locations have been reused and new buildings have been built on top of the others. Sometimes the new layers are in full view. So you can see the new layers and the old layers, they're all in full view. But most of the time they're not, they're really underground. So look underground. This is an example you might be familiar with of layers that you can see. You can see the older layers and then the newer ones on top. This is an, a, a block of apartments, or if you like, a palace, because the Orsini family lives in there. It's one of the most ancient fam families in Rome. It dates back to medieval time, like another very famous fa family, the Colonna. And this is the one underneath is the theatre of Marcellus from Julius Caesar's time. And probably if, you, if we dug underneath the theatre of Marcellus, we would find lay, layers of the Temple of Piety and then possibly underneath of an ancient Roman prison. But let's just say here, the, the theatre that you see is from, it's, it predates Jesus Christ. And then on top, there is an apartment block. How cool is that? You can actually live on, or on top of an ancient Roman theatre. Then, for example, there is Palazzo Valentini. It's next to Piazza Venezia. Let's have a look at it. This is a beautiful Renaissance palace. It dates from the late 1500s. And now it holds the offices of the province of Rome. My best friend's dad used to be the president of the province of Rome and this used to be his office. But if you go underneath, the palace hides a two ancient Roman wealthy home. A wealthy home is called a domus. A not so wealthy apartment building is called an insula. Anyway, if you go under this palace, you'll find the two domuses. And also you'll find the lost the temple of Trajan. So at the back of the palace so there is the Forum of Trajan and we know from the sources that there also used to be a temple to Trajan but it's never been found. Not until the archaeologists started digging under Palazzo Valentini. They found the two domuses which you can now visit and they found the temple to Trajan, the lost temple to Trajan, which you cannot visit just yet, but you will be able to visit soon because they need to be put in safety so that Palazzo Valentini will not crash on your head while you're visiting it. So it's really easy to visit. You need to book in advance. It's called Le Domus Romane, the Roman domuses, di Palazzo Valentini at of Palazzo Valentini. Book in advance. There are tours in English. It's uh, been made fantastic with the uh, light shows and you walk on top of all of the different rooms or all the, the, the internal baths in the Domus and you can have a look at how ancient Romans used to live. Very wealthy ancient Roman days. Not so wealthy ancient Romans you can have a look and you can go to St. John's and Paul Martis on the Cilian Hill. This is not far from the Colosseum. Palazzo Valentini is not far from Piazza Venezia. This, dom this domuses and insula are close to the Colosseum and the entrance to the Palatine Hill. They are on the Cilian Hill. 
So this is what you see from the outside. It's the Church of St. John and Paul. Not the famous ones. These were martyrs from the second century after Christ. And uh, you can see there is a beautiful church. This used to be a refuge for pilgrims. Uh, if you have a closer look or if you're there, in on the bell tower, you will see some ceramic plates of different colors. So if you see ceramic plates on a bell tower, that means that pilgrims could find a refuge there and could find a shelter and food from the Middle Ages onwards. And now it's a super favorite church for weddings. It's got a beautiful park, Villa Celimontana, right in front of it. And often if you go in the morning, Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings, you'll find weddings there. But look what happened. During the 1800s, the priests of the church noticed that the floor was caving in. And so he went underneath and look what he found. He found an insula, so some ancient Roman apartment buildings, and then part of the insula have been converted into a, a domus, a very wealthy domus, with frescoes. And it's a spectacular place. I strongly encourage you to go there. It's really easy to get to. You don't have to book. And it's on a little road called the Clivio di Scauro. It's frescoed, although they are not quite sure about the iconography yet. You don't need to go to Pompeii to enjoy ancient frescoes. There are plenty of them around Rome. If you want, we can go through those another time. You'll find Roman frescoes in Palazzo Massimo alle Terme, right next to Stazione Termini. Um, you find them in catacombs. Uh, you find them in a lot of underground places that you can still visit today. You can find them in the Villa of Livia and the Villa of Augustus on the Palatine Hill and in many other places. So this is the Clivio di Scauro. These are my four kids, Celeste Allegra, Delilah, she calls Sally as well, and James. Now, why am I showing you this picture? Because all of those arches have not been built in the Middle Ages or in the Renaissance or in the Resurgence. They've been built in ancient Roman times. They are original from ancient Roman times. And on the side, you will be able to see they, they were, there was a list uh, of a series of shops. And there was the, the shop door. And up at the top, there would be a window, and that was the mezzanine floor where the shopkeepers used to live. You can go and visit this as part of the domuses on the Cilian Hill. Let's move. This is Celeste, myself, in Piazza Venezia. Ask yourself, what is under Piazza Venezia? You can find out. There is the Ateneum of Adrian. It's a place where cutting-edge science and philosophy speeches were given by the best minds of the time. It was like going to a TED talk in ancient Rome. So TED talks in ancient Rome were held here. This is what it used to look like. Um, there were the bleachers and in the middle there would be a speaker giving the best talks of the time. This is what it looks like now. They discovered it when they were uh, digging to make a tube, uh, an underground station stop in Piazza Venezia. This is one of the many things they found. They covered up most of the other things, but you can still see the bleachers. And this is part of the ceiling caved in. And you can still see part of the Roman remains of the building. It's very exciting. And this is another place, San Clemente, again, a stone throw from the Colosseum. And let's have a look. You cannot take pictures in San Clemente, so I'm just going to show you pictures from the San Clemente's website. This is the apse. So on the ground floor, there is a 12th century basilica. That in itself, it's interesting. But then, if you're not just happy with that, what you should do is have a look underneath. So you take a set of stairs, which is exactly like this. You can be one of those uh, priests 
and uh, friars uh, on the on the stairs and go underneath this is what it looks like so one floor under there's a the ne the the fourth century basilica dating back to Constantinian times and it's still frescoed from Constantine well from medieval times uh, you will find a lot of people go here not only because it's a spectacular place in itself but because this bottom uh, painting fresco depicts uh, uh, one part of the life of San Clemente in which and it's frescoed on the wall in which there are some swear words I will leave you to it you can go and discover it but you'll find that a lot of tourists and visitors come here to have a look at the swear words on the wall of a church but then that's not finished you can still go one level under and you can find the ancient Roman temple to the god Mithras Mithras, the, the cult of Mithras uh, had been imported by the legionnaires uh, who had been fighting in the east. It's an oriental cult uh, related to the sun. There were different levels of initiation and this was the temple and, and uh, the, the initiated used to lie on those bleachers uh, and uh, um, have the different uh, services. But also, right next to it, there was the Mitraeum's teaching area where people would be initiated to the different levels. And then next to it, there would be some ancient Roman housing that you can go and visit. And there is even a source, an underwater, uh, an underground water source. So underground Rome is fascinating. Ancient homes, temples, quarries of tufa, stone, sewers, catacombs, and a lot more are under Rome. It's, it's like an ant's nest of tunnels and homes and temples and places. So generally you cannot visit them because they are under private property. But if you are on, if there is a public building on top uh, or a church, just go inside and smile and ask because you might be able to visit what is underground. So one of my favorite underground spots is two floors under St. Peter's. When you go to St. Peter's, chances are you're going to go one floor under St. Peter's to see the tombs of the popes. That's interesting, but what I'm talking about is a completely different experience. You do need to book in advance. You To go one floor under, you need to go to the right of the church to go two floors under, you need to go out of the columnade and to the left of St. Peter's. You need to go through a gate with uh, uh, the Swiss guards and tell them that you are going to the Ufficio Scavi, Office for Digs. If you go to the Office for Digs, Ufficio Scavi, then you can book and see when you can go two floors under. What are you going to find there? An ancient open air, not catacombs, but at the time it was open air cemetery with family chapels. Like a cemetery today with family chapels. And some of them are dedicated to Roman gods and Greek gods, which were very similar. One of them was, well, oh, few of them were dedicated to Egyptian gods, and some of them were dedicated to Jesus Christ which shows you the richness of the culture predating the Constantinian Basilica. It's a spectacular place. I strongly suggest you go there. And part of the reason it's been dug out is that just before the Second World War, um, again, part of the, the, the ground caved in. They were trying to build the, the tomb for one of the popes one floor under, and they discovered that it was another layer. And the reason why it's so important is that it's believed that St. Peter's was buried here. And so during your visit, you are going also not only to see the richness of the culture at the time, but also see where St. Peter's were, was potentially actually buried. It had been buried there 
he had been buried there because he'd been killed right next doors in uh, the ancient Roman circus of Nero and Caligula. And we're going to talk about in another module. So some places underground are of really easy access and you should just go and have a look. One is called San Nicola in Carcere and that is right next to the Theatre of Marcellus that we looked at before. One is called San Crisogono in Trastevere. One is San Lorenzo in Lucina right off Via del Corso, the main shopping street in Rome. One is Santa Maria Maggiore which is one of the major basilicas of Rome. And one is Santa Maria in Via Lata, which is right next to Palazzo Doria Panfili on the Via del Corso as well. But there are lots of other places. So apart from the catacombs, some of which are open to the public, not all of them are open to the public, there are many more underground sites that are accessible. But some of them you need to book well in advance. So if you're interested, let me know. I might consider running the course on Underground Rome alone. This brings us to our, the last place, was, place we'll look at underground, which is Nero's Domus Aurea. At eye level, you will not know it's there at all. So, as you might know, Nero was an emperor about 60 years AD, 60 AD, and in 64 AD there was a huge big fire in Rome. Some people said Nero actually started the fire. It was actually not. It was in Baia. It was not in Rome at all at the time. But what he did was he, wa he had grandiose plans for Rome. And instead of many emperors did a huge big villa outside of Rome, he wanted a huge big villa inside Rome. So he, he basically got a lot of, repossessed a lot of the ground after the, the fire that used to belong to different people, and built himself a huge massive palace with a lake and a forest with exotic animals in it, and uh, he used to call a wing of his palace the Domus Aurea, the House of Gold. But it's now underground. Why? After Nero's death, it was completely covered up because the Romans did not like the fact that he had expropriated lots of land to have his palace. And so later emperors, amongst them Titus and Trajan, built their own baths, public baths, on top of the palace. So the Domus Aurea was forgotten for centuries. And then during the Renaissance, some kids found a hole and went under. And so then all the artists and uh, lots of other famous travelers of the ground tour took a peek of nearest Domus Aurea and went underground to visit it. Now you can visit it too, but it's a dig, so it's very special. You need to wear a helmet and uh, you cannot go in all the rooms. You can get into the rooms that have been cleaned up of all the dirt and have been made safe. So many rooms are still clogged with the detritus and a whole wing it's possibly under some nearby lived-in home so we're not going to dig under there for the moment. So yet you can fancy yourself a renaissance artist like Raphael and get in for an adventure. So Raphael did actually go in to have a look at the frescoes from ancient Roman times and to study them and took lots of notes and uh, it's been part of his uh, upbringing and it was part of the of the training that artists used to go to through during the Renaissance. So this is a plan of part of the building, the part that we have got access to and there might be more on one side to on the right now, if you have a look, there is this room that we're going to have a look at. It's called uh, uh, La Sala Ottagonale, the octagonal room. And this, there, there might be an axis here. So on this side, you might find, we might find, if we were able to dig, exactly the same uh, plan as on the other side, just replicated. 
So this was the like the central axis, we think, of what you, you, the Domus Aurea used to be. So you need to book. So you go on the site of the Domus Aurea, you book on there, then you turn up for when you're told you can only go and visit on Saturdays and Sundays. So book well in advance if you're only staying a few days and do as you're told. It's an open dig site. It's full of archaeologists and uh, uh, restorators. Uh, and it's very special. Do you want to take a peek? Come inside with me. This is a corridor. And it's all frescoed. And another room. There are lots of delicate details and it dates back to before 68 AD which is when Nero killed himself. It's a massive place, huge, and today to save it we face a, a, a hugely difficult choice between nature and culture. So we want to preserve the culture from 2000 years ago but at the same time on top, there are some spectacular, spectacular trees um, that date back hundreds of years. And now we're faced with the dilemma, should we cut them off because their roots are ruining 2,000 years old culture or not? So at the moment, the trees on top are threatening the stability of the Domosaurus with their roots and the choice has been made to chop down some of them. Now, this is the octagonal room. We'll have a, another look at it in the next module. It is one of the precursors of the Pantheon. So, the Pantheon is a temple to all the gods, which is now a church. It is the, the largest dome in Rome, even larger than St. Peter's. It's, one of, it's, it's the largest, to this day, dome which has not been reinforced on the sides with buttresses um, and this was one of the steps that led Roman architects to be able to build the Pantheon and if you've been in Pantheon you will know that up at the top there is an oculus so there is a an opening like a huge big window right at the top the same thing happens here we've got an oculus a right big window up at the top and um, this is the group I went with, all with our lovely helmets. And um, you, you, you're just going to be mesmerized in this room, both by the technology Roman architects use and just by the fact that you're walking the same rooms as Emperor Nero walked. Now, remember this Oculus. It's where we're going to start the next module. And so in this module, we learn to always be curious about what is under our feet. Now we're about to discover how to look at Rome from above and how to look at it with our nose in the air because plenty of details in Rome are up high. Until then, arrivederci from your Roman Consul, Maria Cristina Saraceno. See you soon. I'll see you in the next module. Ciao.